Hey, Tom here from The Run Testers. In this video, we are going to be talking about marathon shoes. Now, what we mean by that is we're going to be just discussing how you should be looking at marathon shoes, how you should be picking them, what things you need to take into consideration if you need carbon plate shoes, all those sorts of things that you generally ask us in the comments. We are going to be having a chat about all of those bits and pieces. This video is also part of the podcast. So if you're planning on listening to the podcast, maybe skip this video because um, it's, it's the same thing. Um, but there's a lot more on the podcast to listen to as well as this uh, video audio as well. Right, let's jump in and do the video. Okay, so different gear this month is, well, there's a lot of marathons going on over the next few weeks. So different gear, we're going to be talking about how to pick a marathon shoe, what you need to be looking for in marathon shoes. Now, to be honest, we don't advise you getting any new marathon shoes at this point because you're probably in the <laughs> final stages of your training. Uh, but it might be interesting to listen to you for the next one that you do. Uh, so I've got a few questions here for us to talk through um, and just really give advice on different things that you might look out for when you're picking up your next uh, marathon race shoe. So let's start off with a nice simple one. Um, what makes a good marathon shoe? I think a shoe that you love putting on your feet, first of all, you want something that you're going to put on and think um, that you you know know that you're going to feel comfortable in it. But that said, I also think a, a little sprinkle of fairy dust, um, if that's not too like nefarious term, but one of the things I think is great about carbon shoes is that they just like if you don't use them in training and then you use that like you know um, and uh, use them a bit in training but then you know only really use them on a race day you get that little switch and your brain goes ah race time now so I think you want something that is comfortable but not completely normal mm. great yeah you definitely want that little little spark for race day I, I don't think viewers mostly you want comfort protection and then certain runners will want speed as well and it used to be you couldn't really get them all in a package you kind of can these days because phones are so lightweight but protection i think is is underrated if you uh if you keep yourself in good shape you're going to run better at the end of a race so opting for maybe a yeah a slightly more cushion shoe and if it's a bit heavier is usually the way to go especially as you can wang in a carbon plate and it kind of takes away the weight anyway mm -hmm. um i would say that i mean i, I race in complex shoes i race in some of the top tier complex shoes but uh, i know a lot of runners don't necessarily want that so i think there's there's probably it largely depends on what type of runner you are but i think ultimately outside of anything else whether that's speed anything like that it's comfort because i've raced i've done like marathons in shoes that i've not found comfortable they may have been fast uh, I did uh, actually did a half marathon the other day, Brighton half marathon in the the, the uh, Dolphin Elites, Soccer and Dolphin Elites. And my feet were in tatters the whole way. I was in so much pain. Got a PB, got a wonderful PB, but I didn't enjoy it one bit. Uh, so I'd say, uh, really, comfort is 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 the focus. I would say for 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 shoes above anything else uh, for me. But um, you know, if you're an elite, you probably forgo that for uh, a few, few marginal seconds. Well, I think you want to bear in mind how long you're going to be on your feet as well. That's that that, that trade-off, isn't it, with the, the elite yeah. versus the, the non-elite. You know, if yeah. you're non-elite, you're going to be out for like, you know, four hours, whatever, three hours. Then, you know, any stiffness around the heel or any kind of like lace lock system that is remotely uncomfortable or any tongue that slips down is going to be a massive issue. If you're yeah. an elite who's running like 210, then things aren't going to ramp up so quickly with that discomfort anyway um so yeah i think just watch out for all those kind of pressure points yeah play to, play to, play to the type of runner that you are and what you're aiming to do in the marathon don't just go for the top the most expensive best carbon plate race you're out there because <laughs> it might not be the right one for you uh, all right well that leads on to uh what should what do you think people should look for in a marathon shoe, when they're going out shopping, when they're on online, what what should they be looking out for when they're trying to pick their marathon shoe? So it is all obviously very individual and all that kind of stuff in terms of what kind of drop you like and all that. But it is, I think, there's a bit more convergence now. And it used to be in the in the past, if you wanted speed, you're looking at like a very flat, lightweight shoe, which did trash your legs a little bit. But now you don't have to make that trade off. You can get a nicely cushioned shoe. I personally would be looking at shoes about thirty millimeters of stack and above because you might as well have that cushioning. It's so lightweight these days and 
then it's really comes down to the question of are you looking for real comfort just to enjoy the race in which case get yourself a nice cushioned cruiser of a shoe without a plate and if you are looking for speed then you start looking at shoes with a plate and picking between them and trying to find one that suits your fancy whether that's certain drop or a certain feeling underfoot a firmer feeling a softer feeling a bouncier feeling a tippy forward feeling there's a lot of choice out there but yeah i generally start with a, a nice big slab of cushioning and go from there yeah i mean i think again it depends on, on the runner you are so if you're the kind of runner who doesn't want to spend a fortune on a shoe that you're only going to wear a few times before it wears out or you know the sole isn't at its best then you're going to be looking for, you know, slightly more durable outsole, something that you can train in a bit more as well as run your marathon in. Um, however, if you're someone who is like purely I'll throw everything at it to get a PB, then you want to be looking at, you know, super lightweight, you know, think about your running style. As Nick says, you know, if you're a up on your tippy toes person, you might be looking for a, a slightly different shoe to someone who's a heel striker. Um, so it's, again, it's just kind of knowing your your own needs, I think. Um yeah. Yeah, I, I think um choosing a marathon shoe for somebody who, who isn't experienced in the type of marathon shoe they need is really, really difficult because it's not like a normal shoe where, you know, you go out, buy a shoe, you start your running in it, you do loads of miles in it and you, you, you get to know, you know, you, you enjoy that shoe. With a you, with a marathon shoe, you're only really finding out if that's the right shoe during the marathon. <laughs> um there's many shoes that I've done training in and then uh, and then got to the marathon and gone, Oh, this is not a great shoe for you know, the last 5K of a marathon or something like that at the speed that I'm running at. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of shoes that I found out that have been fantastic and really won the day for me. But it, I think it is very difficult. Um, so I would say for someone like a beginner, it's probably best to go for a safe option. There's a lot of new shoes coming out all the time and every one of them sort of says it's the best one for races. I'd say always go for a tried and tested one that a lot of people really rate and have done for a while. You know something like the Vaporfly or something like that because you've got a safer bet than some of the new ones out there. So yeah, I, I for most people I would say if they're new to picking shoes for a marathon, go with something that a lot of people are really keen on. Don't go for something that has just come out. And you also probably need to tailor it a bit to your marathon. I mean, we're assuming people are doing big city marathons for the main, which are just nice flat roads, closed roads. But if you are, we we're talking about having a marathon earlier in the podcast today. If there's a little bit of trail or a few shots, mm. a lot more turns in your marathon than usual, then that's something to take into account maybe when looking yeah. at very high stack and, shoes. And things like grip as well. If you're in the yeah. UK, you might need to pay, do a bit of that. Where, yeah, if, if it starts in, raining. <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah. want to be doing a marathon in a slippy shoe. And I think it's always worth considering as well some of those kind of training partner shoes. I'm aware that I say this as someone who's like, um, I, I love my carbon plate shoes. I love trying the brand new shoes. But actually, you know, we've seen in the past um, some of those kind of training partner shoes to the carbon shoes might actually be a better bet for someone who is, you know, um, you know, wanting something which is going to give them a bit more but doesn't necessarily want to go all out or kind of risk the really aggressive carbon plate shoes there's some there's some great ones out there you know like the speed three or something like that um that you know is still going to give you that kind of race day feel but mm. is is more kind of useful the rest of your training cycle as well and is probably going to be less aggressive on your feet and less likely to cause you problems towards the end yes yeah and also thinking about towards the end the other thing we haven't mentioned yet is stability which is obviously a big thing with the higher stack shoes it is worth really knowing yourself on that front like is a shoe going to roll in like i have a mate who's a really good runner and he ended up he has a few carbon shoes and just used the boston for his uh the adidas boston for his half marathon the marathons because he realized as good as they play was producing the results it was really hurting him and in a marathon that can that might mm -hmm. mean you don't finish the race and that's the worst situation of all right okay so uh this is we've kind of answered this one already um but a lot of people comment on the videos, especially when we do uh, race shoes. Um, do marathon? Do, do people need carbon plate race shoes when it comes to a marathon? Because it's almost nowadays, it almost seems all the marketing and everything is sort of expected. And if you haven't got a carbon plate race shoe, then you've got the wrong shoe. But is that really the case? Um, I would say you, you really don't need a carbon plate shoe. I think they are pretty unequivocally the best racing option for the marathon at a certain point of your running, but. I wouldn't use a marathon, a complex shoe if I was starting out today. I think first marathon, I wouldn't use one. Unless you're someone who's very experienced, has raced loads of half marathons, it just happens to just do their first marathon, then maybe you'd be really experienced with the shoes. But I mean, there is an edge, but they are, as always, like the cherry on top of everything else. Um, and they aren't for everyone. They, they're expensive. They are unstable. 
I I don't think you need one at all. I think if you're going all out for a PB and you've trained in them, you've used them a lot, then they are, they are the best option. So that, so that is the problem. Like, I don't think there's any doubt anymore that they actually do what they say they do. Yeah, I mean, no one is going to get you to a start line of a marathon and be like, sorry, you're not wearing carbon shoes. You can't run this marathon. Yeah. Um, and also... Um, yeah, again, like it depends. It depends on your mindset, what you're what you're looking to achieve as well. Like, if you just want to finish a marathon, I say just. Like, if you want to finish a marathon, it's not a just. Um, then absolutely, you don't need carbon plate shoes, and they'll cost you lots of money. They might cause you know different um, fatigue on your body that you're not used to. There's lots of reasons why they necessarily wouldn't be a good idea. Um, and also, you can feel really smug knowing that you've done a marathon without carbon plate shoes when everyone else around you has got a little <laughs> leg up from their carbon plate shoes. So you get kind of like smug points as well. Um, that said, you know, it's very easy for um, someone like me who has carbon plate shoes or like us who've got <laughs> lots of carbon plate shoes, we run all our races in them to be like, oh, yeah, no, you don't need them. But actually, if you said to me tomorrow, run a marathon and don't wear carbon plate shoes, I'd be like, oh, but 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 that loses me like a couple of minutes because that is my mindset and I am I am time driven and I know that and so it depends on your mindset doesn't it on how you're running the race um, mm. and like we said like how much you've practiced it and things like that but I do think there is something really nice about knowing that like purity of knowing your time as well that isn't from carbon plate shoes because there's no doubt about it they will give you an edge for pretty much everyone like we know that you know, the response as far as speed varies a lot for people, you know, there's the whole 4% thing to begin with was like the maximum. Um, but actually, a lot of the benefit is, as you mentioned, Tom, in the past, is like that lack of fatigue towards the end, it's the protection. And, and the kind of the fact that you're not using those muscles as early on, because you're getting that help. So that is kind of one of the big benefits of them. And that will help most people to some extent, but, you know, if you're sensible in your shoe choice and you've chosen something which is comfortable, which you've trained in, then that is going to do you a whole bunch better than if you just go out and buy a common shoe, having no, never worn it before, um, throw a load of money at it, and then you don't know what's going to happen. Like that, that has the potential to kill your race loads more than not buying a carbon shoe in the first place. Nice. Yeah, I agree with what you both said <laughs> so have anything else, else to add to that really although it's a good point that you said there jill um i think if somebody said to me you need to do a marathon tomorrow um can you wear these shoes instead of your carbon plate race shoes that you like wearing i'd be like oh not not sure about that <laughs> uh, but i, I tell you, i would like to have, it's been a long time the first few marathons i did i did in non-carbon plate race shoes i don't think they existed at the time um but the, the, it's been a long time since I've done a marathon in in, in a non carbon plate shoe, so I would like to see how it how it felt actually. Yeah, I'd also my... say that oh sorry, I, they're not you know they are they're definitely making a difference. They're definitely helpful, and if you a race, it's the thing you want, but it isn't going to be the difference. If you train really really well and you yeah. rock up in any shoes, like my my first sub three I did in the Adidas Supernova, which is the biggest shoe I've still to this day have ever seen, just because I wanted a comfortable <laughs> shoe and it was fine because. Yeah. Lots of great shoes are great for everything. They're all great for running. They're designed for running, most of them. Um, and uh, But yeah, they certainly give you the edge, but I wouldn't be gutted if I didn't have to, wasn't wearing them tomorrow. Yeah, so I, I ran my first sub three in A6 gel Nimbus, which are yeah. like, you know, dead weights on your feet. Wow. Um, <laughs> and I ran my PB in Adios Adi Zero Twos, which are like super mm. racing flat type ones. Um, yeah. But that still stands to that day. And that is a bit of a, you know, I've come two seconds close to that but that was in carbon plate shoes. So in my mind, it's not two seconds from that. It's like, you know, two minutes, two seconds or something. <laughs> yeah. So there is that thing as well of like, you, there's a little bit in your brain that if you've run in both, you're like, are the, are the times comparable? So, so, <laughs> so maybe save yourself the heartache. And don't run in carbon <laughs> shoes ever. <laughs> I tell you what I'd say, if you're new to a marathon, don't run in carbon plate shoes because if there is a benefit you get from it, save that for a little bit later. Do the... Yeah. Do the first one in in shoes that you're comfortable with, and then you know biggest shoes you can find. <laughs> yeah, 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 shoes, <laughs> yeah, two kilograms each. Um, <laughs> That's an interesting question, though. What would be? I wonder what the lightest non-carbon plate shoes are that are still quite cushioned. Well, they're amazing these days. I was, I was thinking this the other day if I was using the Mac Five or like the Rebel V Three, even the Brooks yeah. Hyperion Max, I would love to race them. Like if you think, mm -hmm. even the Adidas Boston, which was the shoe I was going to use for a marathon until the last minute, I managed to get some carbon shoes um, when it was really hard to get them. It's heavier than those shoes. There are some amazing lightweight foams on the market now that just sometimes don't have plates in and they're still really brilliant to run in. 
All right, uh, this should be a relatively simple one to do. This is a little bit like the last question, but it's more to do with, you know, if somebody is looking for shoes, they're on the internet, they're in a shop, the, the, the race shoes are really expensive. Do people need to spend a lot of money on marathon shoes? Um, no. no, no, they don't. They're actually, it's the best possible time to be getting into carbon plate shoes because there's a massive developed market now and there's loads of amazing older versions that are probably equally as good. In some cases, sometimes even feel a bit better than the new ones. So even if you're going for the very top tier of shoes, you can now get them at massive discounts if you're prepared to wait, keep an eye on things, shop around, wait for sales. So you've got a marathon just after Black Friday, you're going to be in big luck, um, put it that way. Um, and also, if you're just looking for cushion shoes that are going to do the job, there are you can get those for a lot, you know, around... You can get brilliant ones for around £100 that are often reduced, things like the Nike Pegasus, the uh, Puma Velocity Nitro 2, comfortable shoes that will see you through the race um, and are often reduced even from reasonable RRPs. So I think this is the least you'd ever have to, you had to spend for a while uh, on marathon shoes as long as you're not insisting on buying the new £300 one. Yeah. Never, you never have to pay ridiculous amounts of money for running shoes these days. And- Slightly disagree with you both, I'm afraid. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, this it's all relative, but it might, there used to be a time when you could get a decent shoe for 60 quid um, or 40 quid, even if you're really lucky. But like what we're saying now is you can get a decent marathon shoe for a hundred pounds. If you swap, if you shop around, you don't have to spend 300 pounds, still a lot of money. um, But you probably, probably do need to pay around a hundred, 120 pounds for something that is good enough. If you want to be kind of, you know, something that's going to get you through that marathon to show the training that you've been in. I agree that you don't have to go for the 300 pounds one, you know, like the yeah. 90 next percent three, you know, why buy those when you can buy two pairs of the next percent two and they're not that much difference um, for the same price. Like absolutely yeah, yeah. don't, don't always go and buy the brand new one for the super price. And, and it is really good that, you know, there is competition now and they are going to have to price down on things, you know, like there is a bit of competition going on there. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I still think like 120 quid, you've probably well, got to be around that mark, haven't you? Well, that's if you're going for like a, 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 a race shoe, shoe calm yeah. shoe. If you, yeah. you I mean, you can get, you could quite comfortably run a, a nice marathon in the Puma Velocity Nitro Two, something like that. If you that was your focus, you just wanted to finish. I, I think that'd be not quite a fine shoe to do. Reebok uh, Flatride Energy Four as well is good on, but yeah, yeah flats yeah. flats were cheap because there was nothing there. That is that is one. That, I was going to say racing shoes have got a little bit more democratic in that they're much more comfortable, but the pricing hasn't got more democratic. Certainly, the flats were. Yeah. Flats you probably can still find some flats. Does any brand still make new flats? Well, I mean, the problem is, of course, that most of the new shoes are not track legal. So if you ever want to run like a 5K or 10K on the track and you don't want, obviously you don't want to run that in spikes probably, um, unless you're a pro. Um, actually, there aren't many racing flats out there now that are track legal. Um, so there's one, one of the on shoes and one of the old Adidas ones that you can still get in sales. And that's mm. about it. The on shoe, I think, is harder on your legs than spikes. That one, <laughs> the one that the cloud. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the, the so the last question I've got on here, um, nice simple one for you. Uh, what common mistakes should people avoid when picking up a new pair of marathon shoes? Anything you can think of where you go, you've been I've been tricked by that before. Don't don't do that. Buy the newest brand, newest one straight away. <laughs> um, I bought the Alpha yeah. Ply. It wasn't for me. Um, yeah. But I mean, and also don't be tricked into thinking you have to keep them necessarily. Most brands will let you send them back if you've, you know, barely run in them. So make the most of it. I'd say, I think a mistake generally made of marathons is going in thinking this is your last marathon, the only marathon you're ever going to do, putting it all on this incredibly important shoe choice. I'd say be a bit more relaxed, maybe really think about where you are and try and aim for a comfortable shoe uh, if you need one. Um, And yeah, it was Tom said it earlier, but you know, I, I say this is a general point because we get comments on video saying, oh, I saw so-and-so won this race in this shoe, so it must be the best shoe. Elites are great, and they're all running in the top shoes, but elites have sponsors, and they tend to be sponsored by two companies, and it doesn't necessarily mean they make the very best shoes. We happen, I often use Nike shoes, but um, it doesn't necessarily mean they're the best shoes. But So, yeah, I wouldn't get too distracted by that because there are a load of very good brands who don't necessarily – sponsor the athletes in the same way and don't have the shoes on the people who are going to win those races anyway so mm-hmm. i wouldn't just watch boston and then pick up whatever shoe kipchoge wears if he wins he might not win <laughs> mm-hmm. well i would say uh make sure you run a good distance run in the shoes that you want to do your marathon in before you do the marathon because if you get a new pair of shoes and do a few 10ks in them then uh, you're not getting a good view of how that shoe's going to deliver 
over a marathon because it's a very different um, experience in the late stages of a marathon <laughs> with a shoe. And sometimes I've made some real clangers from. I've run marathons in new shoes before because I had to test them. Yeah, and um, they felt fine. I put them off. These are great. You know, first five k, ten k, and then you get to half marathon. You're like, oh man, these are awful. <laughs> I'm not enjoying these at all. Yeah, I don't think I'd go into a marathon in a shoe I hadn't done. I think 30k and a 30k that included some sections of hard pace to really because yeah. you've got to put a bit of impact through the shoes to sometimes feel if they're going to be comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right then, guys. I think that covers us for marathons. And if you're listening to this and you're doing a marathon this month or next month or wherever, whenever you're listening to this, good luck. Uh, hopefully you found that useful. That's it from us on our chat about marathon shoes. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the little bell, anything like that. And don't forget to check the channel out for all the other videos we've got. Running shoes, headphones, watches. There's a lot of stuff on the, on the YouTube channel. Right. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time.